Hi, welcome to another video. As you probably guessed, this one's going to be talking about GPS and getting the data and time on the screen. This is the Microelectronica Easy Pick version 7. There's 3.3 volt GLCD monochrome, 128 by 64 pixels, and you'll see I've got the latitude, longitude, and the time down the bottom, 8:59 a.m. And you'll see because I'm in a tiny little country up here uh, called England, I've removed the little sort of crosshairs that Microelectronica use, and just put. Uh, a sort of a big circle and you can see it's flashing my location this would obviously work if you're in sort of Russia or Africa North or South America you'd get a dot in a relevant position uh, it's not too fancy it's not like the, zip, the map zooms in or anything uh, and using the fonts of use them page numbers so that when the data changes the numbers automatic change and don't write over the existing or the the existing number. As you see, we've just gone nine o'clock with the zero mast out there. Right, uh, if you've got the uh, Microelectronica GPS two click, uh, I'll give you a few pointers because you you might find it didn't work, and if you haven't gone onto the internet or sussed it out yourself. I'll show you why that doesn't work. Well, the uh, GPS I'm using is actually similar to this one. This is a pre-wired three-pin device. This one's actually from PV Electronics. Costs about twenty-seven pound, and you get a length of three three-way coax with a convenient jack plug on the end. Let me plug that in there. That's the PV Electronics unit. Uh, that chip at the top with the aerial, it's actually the aerial on top, chip is underneath. That device there is virtually identical to the one from I got from Farnell. Except the one I got from Farnell's got five pins so I can program to run at 115 kiloboard and get data in at 10 times a second instead of one times a second. They run at 9,600 board rate or slower if you want, but 9.6 is the default. Uh, I'll show you how we can pick up some data, look at the strings, and put the data on a GLCD. Right, that's the power supply I'm using for the Farnell GPS. Uh, 3.1 volts, works down to 2.7 up to 3.6, and you can see it's drawing 20, nearly 30 milliamps. The PV Electronics is actually wired and they've got the resistors on the board so you can actually run uh, 5 volts into the PV Electronics module. So if you're working with picks with 5 volts, the PV Electronics might be a better buy. Uh, and just before I show you the code, that's the incoming data there. Serial format, NEMA, also NMEA. If I just looking at the individual bits, if I change the time base, you see the data coming in roughly one sentence every second. Right, I'll show you some code. Right, uh, you, you might see from the top I'm using Microelectronica's Micro C Pro for PIC version 6. Um, the software is their example using the GPS click, GPS 2 click. Might be able to see just here. So, project name, that's, I'm using the ATF 45K22 microchip microcontroller. I'm using the Easy Pick version 7 board. If I just give you a quick view, I'm not using their GPS. I'm using my own GPS, picking up the same data. I've got the um, signal going in to the top on the receive line, RC7, 
and then I'm just grounding the power supply on one of the ground pins. And you see it's still running over there, so I'll pick my own GPS. I happen to have the PV Electronics unit, and then bought another one just to mess about with from Farnell. The PV Electronics one is actually for my Nixie clock, it picks up the time and updates the Nixie clock. Right, back to the screen. So there's a fair bit of code here, so I'll try and run through it quickly, but give you the important bits you need to know. So first of all, uh, have to include the world map. Uh, right, if you're not using Microelectronica's GPS to click, then you, I've removed half of these statements because you simply don't need them. Uh, it's got you can see the bits for wake up and power and all that sort of stuff for the microelectronics GPS. So if you see bits removed, that's why because I'm not using theirs, you just get rid of them. So this is the jar for the long strings coming in. Ints for the eye latitude, longitude, uh, map shown. This is for the UART and you'll see these bits I've put in to give us the characters on the screen for the latitude, longitude and time. Right, that's the usual microelectronica configuration for the GLCD. Right, this is the interrupt for the UART. Um, so when RC the port C the interrupt flag bit equals one, it's reading the UART, putting it into text I, and it's incrementing the incoming data by one, reading each character. When it gets to 768, it resets, and that's clearing the flag. Right, this cursor, this bit here I've changed a bit. You can see it does the scaling for the, it was, was crosshairs, but I've changed it because it was just too small to see on the screen. You can see they're dividing up the screen uh, and giving us coordinates. And then I've removed these lower dots. I think they had a left dot, right dot and a centre dot. But what I've done, removed all of those and just put dual CD circle fill for the longitude, latitude. Right, and this is the configuration for the microcontroller. So it's these ports are digital. I've removed these statements. Obviously, if you've got the microelectronica GPS, you need to kick them in. Initialize the GLCD, clear the screen. Just something for the map. You'll you'll see why this is here later. Initializing the UART at 9,600 board rate. Small delay, waiting for the UART to start up. Well, I've deleted this wake up bit or remmed it out with these two statements rend it out because my GPS was never going to wake up, this program was never going to start because I haven't got the Microelectronica GPS. Right, these next bits, uh, this is the interrupt enable, global interrupt, peripheral interrupt enable, enabling all, all these bits for the UART so that the UART delivers an interrupt and the microcontroller starts looking at it. This is while we're waiting for a fix just writes that on the screen and then while one so this is our, now our loop I didn't know what these two bits were so I looked them up page 278 OERR bit although they put one I believe it should be OERR so OERR underscore bit equals naught FERR bit equals naught that's the overrun error and then frame error so if the timing on your UART is wrong between the transmit and receive, 
you get an error there or if you haven't cleared the buffers you'll get the overrun error so we're keeping those clear so you don't if there are these errors you don't don't have to then go and clear them right so if ready equals is equal to one that's saying if the data in the text array is ready the string is str str so it's like string string and if you look up the microelectronica example of this it's looking for this string which is the first part of one of the sentences coming in so if that sentence starts with that puts it into the text and we can go once it's found that the program starts continuing if the string is not equal to naught then we start going on well now this is I'm not sure if the microelectronica GPS is different but they had if string 43 is equal to 1 then you know it's continue but only thing only trouble with this maybe it's just my GPS I've captured a string up the top here so bits 43 so remember count from naught count these commas 43 in my example was 2 now what they're saying is I've not only got a GPS fix I've got a differential GPS fix which means the satellites are using ground based stations to confirm your position which is actually more accurate brings it down from 15 meters to as little as 10 centimeters apparently uh, I'd be happy with 3 meters which is what the GPS spec is so because they had if it equals 1 my data coming in is 2 so that's never going to equal 1 so the program is never going to run so what I've changed it to if 43 position 43 is equal to or greater than 1 or greater than or equal to 1 then we can continue so because my 2 is equal to or greater than 1 the program starts running so uh, it could be in your part of the world maybe you only get a 1 or maybe uh, like here in the UK you've got ground based stations so that 1 position 43 becomes a 2 or that number can go up to 5 I believe you're going to have precision referencing uh, that will start with a 3 maybe you're looking at a different sentence that doesn't begin with dollar G P G G A. Uh, for those who haven't seen the other videos just look up the data NMEA National Marine Electronic Association and that's at gpsinformation.org you'll find all the information for the sentence here is free so thank you very much to them and if you look GGA right that's NMEA data in case it wasn't on the screen right so the sentence we are looking at look down these initials down here right that's this there's GGA, so fix information. The GLL, that is actually Microelectronica's, I think uh, GPS, just the uh, not GPS2, but just GPS. They were using this data coming in, so latitude and longitude, and the 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 data are in d different places. So you just change the destinations of the strings to pick up the relevant data. So here's the GGA. So you see there, there's a time, latitude, longitude, uh, fixed quality, and these were the numbers I was telling you about. So if a zero is invalid, one is GPS fix, and you could see I had number two, so which is uh, D GPS fix, which is which is differential GPS fix, works on ground stations as well. 
but there's the number three look that's a precision fix real time so on and so forth and look number eight number of satellites being tracked if you haven't seen my other videos I've got a demonstrator program you can get that runs your UART to USB straight into Windows 7 it plots these on the screen for you it doesn't actually give you a map or you can go for another map up here put in your coordinates and find out where you are right back to the code so this here you can see latitude and longitude and that's taking the string so look position 18 well it starts from here from the dollar sign dollar sign is naught so naught one two three four include the commas all the way up to 18 which is there five and then we've got 19 so which is the three which you might remember from the GLCD where the five three uh, north and then longitude 31 which is somewhere one of these two digits 31 32 and 33 remember naught one two three four five six seven count up like that and a time string seven eight and nine Oh, 10. Right, time string 7, 8, 9, and 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 brings us up to the first number 2. So that's 21, 18. This was captured last night. And put on the screen last night uh, so 7, 8, 9, 10 I'm capturing the hours and minutes forgetting the seconds so that's latitude, longitude, time uh, then the string depending if you're in the north or south uh, if the map's not shown they reprint the map and then int to string or that's her cursor display the small menu at the top display cursor int to strings for the latitude longitude time and then I'm putting the digits on the text on the screen sorry that's it that's the end of the program hope you like it thumbs up if you find it helpful thank you very much